Hi, everyone. Start letting everybody in and then um, we'll get started. Actually, I'm sitting here doing work and didn't realize it was already seven o'clock. Sorry about that. I'm going to mute Paul. Carl, what a nice picture you have up there. Yo, star coach. <laughs> Never seen you out of gym clothes. <laughs> you clean up. Work picture, yeah, work picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm just reminding everybody that we're in here. Bless you. All right, we're gonna give it another minute or so and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. I love looking up and just seeing what everybody's doing. Eating, driving, doing work, cooking. I love seeing people on here from California on the other coast. Like right now, it's just af late afternoon for them. Hello. Emmy, I saw Vanessa come on too. Hi. <laughs> How are you guys? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started. So happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm sure there's more people who are gonna pop on here. Um, I loved the weigh-ins this week. I feel like nobody needs a lecture this week, which is so awesome. I feel like we did, I don't need to like go into the whole, all right, we need to remind ourselves, this is the macros and blah, 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 um, which I kind of do every week. But, you know, we only have um, till our last weigh-in, weigh-in, weigh-in for sure, official weigh-in is the 16th. The new session starts July 19th. This is a time to make the most out of these last couple of weeks and try to grasp everything you can. So if you're staying on, which I haven't heard anybody's not staying on yet, um, to move forward and just kill it the next session. And I say that because, you know, sometimes it takes three to four to five weeks to, for something to sink in. And then we're like, oh my God, I got it. This is awesome. Or you find a couple of recipes that really work for you and they stick with you and you use them all the time. Um, you know, it's everybody handles things differently. Some people, you know, pick it up immediately, a week or two into it. And, you know, everybody, everybody's different. So once again, don't compare yourself to everybody. Um, I posted a couple of transformations the past couple of days because I wanted to show you guys that you could be super small and still only lose like five to eight pounds and look like you've lost 10 to 20 pounds and only lost five to six pounds. Those, there was, and then there was another transformation where 
you know, she lost 15 pounds and looked amazing. And then the transformation I posted today, she's lost only 28 pounds, but she looks like she's lost so much more. Like there, it's crazy how three different people from three different body types lost three different kinds of weight. You went from someone that lost five pounds, 15 pounds and 28 pounds and all their bodies changed dramatically. And you can't say, oh, well, she lost a lot of weight. That's not why, because that one person looks like she did, but she lost a ton of inches. Her, her scale, she lost 4.6 pounds. The first one, the blonde one, 4.6 pounds, Lisa. But her body fat went from 24.7% to 10%. So yes, her scale hardly moved. She lost less than five pounds, but she lost 15% body fat. And the way she did that was changing her eating habits. She is the type of person that if I told her she could not have something, she didn't eat it for the last five weeks. Like she did not falter at all. She ate super clean because she knew she didn't have a lot of weight to lose but she wanted to lose that body fat and she lifted and she changed. She even said to me um, at Orange Theory, she's like, you know, I used to like pick up the lighter weights and all of a sudden I'm picking up 25s to do like a single arm chest press, a uh, close grip chest press. And I noticed the difference. And that's why it's so such a dramatic change where the scale didn't move, but she lost fat. Um, and then the second person that lost the 15 pounds, she, eats clean, but has her days, but she tracks every single day, never loses focus, is committed, texts me or messages me all day long and still has her cheats, but gave up alcohol, which made a big difference. And then the third one, she didn't give up anything, but she tracks everything she eats. So she still goes and gets her fast food, but she tracks it. And she had a dramatic weight loss, fat, body fat, everything, weight loss, scale loss. So everybody's totally different. Um, and I'm going to keep sharing some as we go. And I'll let you know the pounds, the inches, all that stuff. But I want you to keep in mind, we do pictures because that's the tail. If I send you a side by side, because the scale may have only moved a couple of pounds and you see your body changing, leaning out, getting smaller then that macros tracking is working because the scale is not always going to move. And I've said this over and over again. So please keep that in mind as we continue on. Okay, so I have two topics today. I don't know if we're gonna get to the second topic. So I'm not gonna, talk, I'm not gonna even mention what it is yet um, because this one I might talk a lot about, but we'll see. So, and I'm blind, so now I have to put both lights on. And I have to move over here where the light is. It sucks getting old, by the way. Okay, so I get to, I hear this all the time. Um, should I eat if I'm not hungry? Or, you know, I can't believe you gave me so many macros. How am I going to eat all of these? Or I've never eaten this much in my life. Or there, I, I, there's no way I'm going to eat all these carbs. Or, you know, I'm not hungry. Should I eat this? Whatever. Th those are all the things we hear. Or... I, um, I know I was under my proteins all week, but I was always full by the end of the day. So I didn't want to eat them. Does this sound familiar to any of you? Raise your hand. Yes, nodding, yes. How about um, the numbers you gave me are just so much more than I normally eat. I can't imagine eating all that food and still losing weight. So I know that these quotes came from with somebody because I took them from you guys. It's messages that you've sent me. So I know like people have said it. Um, and I've heard it. I hear it all the time. I hear it every session. I've he heard it for years. I get it. It's not easy getting all the food in. But let me give you reasons. I'm going to give you guys reasons of under eating, even though you don't think you're under eating. If the numbers I gave you are the numbers I gave you, that means that that's your, you have um, basal metabolic rate and your basal metabolic rate, your BMR is the number of calories you should eat sitting down, doing nothing all day long if you just sat in a chair or laid in your bed. That is your resting caloric number for the day. 
So if it was 1400 and I gave you 1600 and you said you couldn't eat that, I wouldn't even be able to drop you under that because your body would technically go into starvation mode and you don't want to do that. So when I give you your macros, I calculate it from what you tell me, but I start at that basal metabolic rate. When we under eat, which a lot of us tend to do, we don't even eat at our basic basal metabolic rate. Like we don't even, half of us don't even know what that is. But when you do your in body, which I always tell everybody, if you get your in body, send it to me. I want to match it with the numbers I give you because the in body gives you your metabolic rate. Um, if you're not eating even at that number, you're under eating. And that is so bad for you. And that's what causes yo-yo dieting. That's why when you under eat and you're on um, Nutrisystem or keto or any of those other diets, you lose weight because you're under eating and then you decide to eat normal and you gain the weight right back even more so because now you're eating what you're supposed to be eating and now your body's starving. So it's holding on to everything. So we're going to talk about eating more at your meals so it doesn't feel like you're eating as much and then ways to incorporate in your meals more um maybe drinking a meal or two not necessarily a real meal but like a snack so i always tell people if you're not near your proteins or your carbs have a protein shake they're good for you they're not bad for you. Protein shakes are not bad for you. Don't let anybody tell you that they're not good for you. Um, you know, if you don't do whey or soy, there's pea protein. There's so many different options out there that you can try. Um, everybody knows I love uh, Premier Protein, but you can do whatever works for you, but it will help you hit your numbers. I am not telling you to replace your meals with a drink. I'm telling you that you can supplement a snack or to hit your numbers with a protein bar or a shake. I have to eat a lot during the day and so does Carl. So like, and so does Brian. So like I will eat a protein bar and a protein shake every single day. Cause that will get me closer to my numbers on top of real food, which is okay. As long as you're eating and chewing your real food. Um, I know that I'm, I always ask you guys to eat more than you're used to. I get it. Nobody, probably nobody that's come into this program has actually ever ate what I've told them. Like here is 1,874 calories. You're gonna eat 178 grams of protein. And no one has ever said to me, oh, I eat that every day. No problem. Now I do hear carbs and fats. People are like, oh, I'll hit my fats, no problem. That Most people hit their fats, no problem. Um, a lot of people hit their carbs, no problem. But that's because you're eating the wrong things. And that's where we start to look at what you're eating to change that. Um, or a lot of times I'll see, you know, people eat for dinner, um, broccoli and chicken. And then I'll say, well, where's your sweet potato? Or where's your rice or your quinoa? Where's your carb? Oh, I don't want to eat a carb at dinner. I have to go to bed after that. Okay. Your body doesn't know what time it is that you're getting that. It has no idea that you're going to bed at whatever time. Your body doesn't have that clock to know that. Now, I don't want you to eat French fries with cheese and chili on it before you go to bed, because that's just shit. But yes, brown rice, jasmine rice, sweet potato, white potato. White is not bad for you. Don't let anybody tell you white is bad for you. If you track it, you can eat it. You can eat a white potato. You can have white rice, as long as you account for it. I will say that anything white has more sugar in it, so you're gonna have more carbs. But that's okay, that's not bad. Um, so I want you guys to start thinking about if you're not hitting your macros because you're not, um, you're not, we're going to get to this because you're not planning ahead, start thinking about why it's so important to hit your macros. And I'm going to tell you a couple of reasons why, what under eating does to you. Under eating affects your hormone balance, which will lead to water retention, unwanted fat storage, and long-term health issues. And when I say under eating, keep in mind, I mean not eating at your basal metabolic rate or higher. 
So I'm not talking about under eating, eating 800 calories or a thousand calories. I'm talking about eating at like 1400 or 1500 when you should be at 17 or 1800. So I want everybody to make sure that you guys are all on the same page with me. That is what under eating means. Um, under eating may affect your energy levels, which means it'll affect your workouts and your performance, which will lead to a less calorie expenditure, which will then cycle into not losing weight. Under eating may decrease your metabolism. When you're under fueled, your body actually burns fewer calories throughout the day. The more you eat, the more you lose because your body is digesting less food and you're, because your body will naturally start to down regulate energy it expends to conserve as much po as possible. Thinking that you don't have enough energy, it's gonna hold on to it. Does that, does that make sense to you guys, right? Hopefully it does. Um, so start to relearn about your body. Start to listen to your body. If you are eating lunch and you're not one to normally snack between lunch and dinner, have a larger lunch because that but between lunch and dinner, if you're not going to want to have that snack that you logged, but you didn't feel like eating it. It doesn't count that it's logged and you don't eat it. You still have to eat it. But if you want to eat it at lunch, even though you logged it for your snack, eat it at lunch if that's more of a time you want to eat it. And then you don't have to eat again until dinner. As long as you get all those numbers in. Someone messaged me that before they started the program, they were doing intermittent fasting. But they decided to not do it because they were doing macros or change their window. So I practice intermittent fasting. I've always practiced intermittent fasting. I have an eight hour window and I eat all my food between 12 and 8 p.m., everything. So everybody always asks me, what time do you eat? I'm like, I eat from 12 to 8 p.m. They're like, yeah, but what time do you eat? I literally eat from 12 to 8 p.m. I have never not have food in my hand or my mouth from 12 to 8 p.m. That's how I can get in. I usually eat about 2,200 calories a day. And I, my first meal, I inhale. For one thing, I'm hungry, but I also know if I don't do it at that time, I might not be hungry at three or four o'clock and I still have all those macros to eat. So I take advantage of the time when I know I'm hungry and I just eat it. And then by the time it comes to three or four o'clock, if I know that that day I might be busy or hung, not as hungry, I've already had what I was supposed to eat. And then I just keep going on until I'm done eating at that eight o'clock hour. Um, if it's 740 or 730 and I notice that I am not on my macros, I will eat something to hit my macros. If I'm, if I'm down on carbs and fats, I'll eat two rice cakes to hit my numbers. If I don't have enough protein, I will eat a tuna packet. And Michael look at me is like, are you hungry? No, I'm not hungry, but I got to hit my numbers. That's the mentality you need to have. That's the mentality that will be a consistent weight loss for you. Not Shannon, can you look at my numbers because I'm, I'm getting ready for bed and I still have 48 carbs left and 26 proteins left. Well, at that point I feel bad because then I'm like, okay, well, do I tell them to sit down and make toast and eggs because that's what they really could eat right now? Or do I call, tell them call it a day? And I hate to say call it a day, but if it's nine o'clock at night, no one's gonna wanna start cooking, right? So I give options. Do you have this in your house? Do you have this in your house? Do you have this in your house? If you come back at me and like, no, 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 I'm gonna say, you know what, call it a day. There's nothing else I can do for you. That's why I always tell everybody to have Quest chips in your house, graham crackers in your house, those rice cups that you can stick in the microwave in your house, tuna pouches in your house. They're, those things are going to help you hit your numbers when you have that little amount left. Like if you have protein and carbs, I'm going to say grab two rice cakes, put some tuna on it, eat those before you go to bed. Bam, you hit your numbers. Do you have a protein shake? Yes. Drink that before you go to bed. Well, I'm not really hungry. Okay. So then you're not going to hit your numbers. Like there's only two answers when it comes to that, right? You're either gonna hit your numbers or you're not gonna hit your numbers. So you have to really think about, 
yes, I get it. You're not hungry per se, but you have to eat. And you have to start listening to your body of the times of day that you actually really are hungry. And that's when you want to take advantage of it. So that you're not making yourself eat when you're not really technically hungry. You might have to eat a little to hit your numbers, but start listening to your body. Maybe take notes. Like I, a long time ago, realized when I'm most hungry. And for me, it's obviously between 12 and two and between six and eight. So that's when I get a lot of my food in. But when I'm driving in the car between two and six, I eat anything that I pack. I'll drink my yogurt, things that I can get on the go. I will get it in because I'm not hungry, but I know I have to get them in and I'm doing something else. So I'm not actually sitting down eating. And I'm not thinking about it. Your meals, you want to sit down and eat and think about. Okay, I want to read something else. I'm blind, remember? Okay. I want you guys to try to be consistent on the times that you're eating. Like how I was just saying, I know these are the times I like to eat. These are the times that make me when I'm hungry. When you're keeping track of the times that you're hungry and you're consistently eating those times that you're hungry, you'll become more hungry at those times. You'll want more food and it will be easier to get your macros in. Because you're training your stomach and you're training your mind that that's the time you feed. So when you do um, intermittent fasting, it's feeding time. Oh, so I was talking about the, the tribe member that does intermittent fasting. So she decided that she wasn't going to do intermittent fasting anymore. And she was going to try to just do macros without intermittent fasting. Because she was afraid she couldn't get all her food in during that window of time. Every time I get on that same topic, the same person keeps coming back in the group. It's weird. Um, so then recently she said, you know what? I'm going to go back to intermittent fasting. I'm going to go back to my window and see if it works better. And I honestly think her doing that will force her to eat in that window and not give her such a big blanket of time. She might get it in because now she knows the time she has to eat. So if you are new to this, and you don't know the times that you're hungry or you're not in a routine yet, start thinking about that. Start writing that down. Focus on that. Um, so should I eat if I'm really not hungry? Everybody always asks me that. Should I really eat if I'm not hungry? Yes. But trust yourself. Know that you have to eat it even though you're not hungry. But if you had it when you were hungry, you probably wouldn't have had to eat it when you're not hungry. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so we're think about ways to increase your appetite, to make yourself hungry, to get your macros in. Take a walk, do push-ups, do a plank. You know, so I'm talking about things that keep you active. Do laundry, change your sheets. Those things will increase your caloric burn, which will make you hungry. Um, here, here's some ideas to, to think about that will help you deal with not being hungry. So going with low volume foods. So example, if you have extra carbs at dinner, have your protein, have your veggies, have your rice. We talked about it. Um, if you're, if you're quick to feel full, Use, have foods that are denser in macros, but lower in volume. So rice is really dense in, in, in macros and carbs, but that little cup is not a lot of food, but it is a lot of carbs. Or maybe you have like whole wheat pasta in the house or white pasta in the house, if you know you're always short on carbs. Cook some up on Sunday, leave it in a bowl. So if you're short on carbs, have a couple of pieces of pasta to hit your carbs. Um, pre-plan your macros. I talk about this all the time. If you get behind on your macros during the day because you're busy or you don't plan ahead, you're going to find yourself stuck with a ton of food at the end of the day. And of course, at that point, you're not hungry. But if you plan ahead and eat when you're hungry and plan your meals, that won't happen. Um, 
So that will help you avoid having to overeat. Remember that time I told you I had to sit down in that bowl and I was eating and I was crying. I've told that story so many times. I don't really let that happen anymore. I try not to let that happen anymore. Well, I don't cry at my meals anymore because I'm always hungry. But that was when I was training my body to eat those big bowls to get my macros in. Um, we talked about this. Monitor your hungry levels and eat when you're hungriest. Carb up, protein up when you know you are the hungriest. If you're the hungriest when you first wake up in the morning, eat. Have four eggs, two pieces of toast, some turkey sausage. But if you do that, make sure you know by the end of the day what you've already had to eat and you don't overeat. Because you already said you don't like to eat at night, you like to eat during the day, so you gotta watch that. Um, if you are having trouble um, eating it right off the bat, slowly start increasing it. But I think everybody is okay with that right now. Um, the, when you have good sleep quality and you have a bedtime routine, you will eat better the next day, believe it or not. So if you need a bedtime routine or you want me to put that habit in, a couple of people have a bedtime routine in their habits. Um, that I put in for them. If you want that, let me know. I have some people that say, you know, wash my face before bed, brush my teeth before bed, whatever the case is, I can add that into your habits for you specifically, whatever you want it to be. Um, but a creating a bedtime routine will help your quality of sleep, your quantity of sleep, which will help you eat more food the next day. Um, so drinking your macros, adding macros in liquid form, we already talked about that. You could swap water for milk if you're short fats. And proteins. You can swap protein shakes. Um, a good thing to, to try is, um, and I've talked about this too, taking oatmeal, putting a scoop of protein powder in your oatmeal, and putting a little bit of peanut butter or almond butter. That's your carbs, it's your proteins, and your fats in one bowl. It is amazing. It's like dessert. It tastes so good. If I'm home, I eat it. If I'm not home, I can't eat it. But I make them into protein balls too. Remember I showed you guys the protein balls I make? It's the same thing, except the protein balls are cold and I make hot oatmeal. It's the same recipe. Just one is hot in a bowl and one is cold in a bowl. ball. But they are so good and you get everything in there. And if you make a big bowl of it, you'll get a lot in there. You can even do two scoops of protein if you want to do. Um, so that's a great way to maximize that. Um, The most important thing is trusting the numbers that I gave you. And a lot of, I know that's hard to do. Um, I know coming into it, you're like, I hope she knows what she's talking about. I hope she doesn't make me gain weight. I hope I don't get fat. Why, why would my, what if my scale goes up? And I promise you, and if I could live with every single one of you for six weeks, and watched everything you put in your mouth and watched everything you did and drank your water and did your steps and worked out, you would all lose six to 10 pounds in that six weeks. But there's so many variables. There's so much going on in our lives. We don't hit our macros 100%. I don't live with you. You probably would not want me to live with you. Um, that it's impossible. But if you trust me, and you trust that I know what I'm doing. And I promise you all, I do know what I'm doing. And it's science. It's not something that I'm just like, oh, I'm going to give her 120 uh, carbs and her 137. And you know what? She has blue eyes. So she's going to get 156 carbs. It's science. And everybody's different. And it's a calculation. And it's based on you personally for you. So if the person next to you did your macros, it would not work for them. Um. So the most important takeaway from this is eat when you're most hungry to get them in. Think ahead, prep. I always talk about it, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. Make cross, crock pot meals, increase your portion sizes, have a protein and a carb at every single meal. And, if while, and when you have a protein with a carb at every meal and not have a carb by itself, it breaks the carb down faster. 
versus just eating a carb by itself. So those are super important. Um, I had a couple of people ask me to request recipes for chicken recipes, for any kind of recipes. So we have that recipe group. You guys were all giving recipes. It was like going, 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 and then it went. So please give recipes. I don't cook. So I can totally pull out recipes from online and post them that look good to me, but I can't tell you how they taste. I can pull recipes and give you the macros and I have no problem doing that, but I don't know if they're good or not. Um, a really good app to download though, that is free for some, from what I hear, for some it's not, is um, Fit Men Cook. Write this down, Fit Men Cook. It has recipes, it has macros, it will make you a shopping list. They're on YouTube. I think Jody said they're, I, I think, I'm not putting words on Jody's mouth, but I think she said he was a good looking guy. Jody? Ooh la la. He is. <laughs> it so was so much fun cooking with him. Yeah, yeah. see, Jody and loves him, so he watches him on YouTube. But I I have used his recipes. I will not lie about that. I haven't cooked at My starters. He's on YouTube. It's cutting out. Yes. Everything is delicious. Everything is delicious. His recipes, his recipes are delicious. Okay, good. So uh, yeah, and you know what? Um, I have a couple of private clients that aren't in the group, like the private clients that I train that use his app, and they're I'm constantly seeing their food they're eating. Like they made an avocado tuna sandwich or something, and it looked amazing. Like I don't cook. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not good at it. I don't do it. I don't have the time for it. Mike does the cooking. He's good at it. Um, and if I could have a cook, I would in a heartbeat, but I'm just, this doesn't happen. So, but I love, I would love for you guys to start sharing recipes again, letting us know what you're eating. It's, it's cool to hear what everybody's eating, you know, sharing what you're eating. I don't want to know what you're eating all day long. Don't post in the group. This is what I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I do not want you guys to do that because what happens is people copy and I don't want copycats in the group. I want you to eat what you like to eat, but recipes are amazing because you can make the recipe your own. You can incorporate the recipe in your meal plan, but I don't want you to get on somebody else's program because that's their, 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 that's their daily food. And that's like putting you on a diet. So you don't want to do that, but I would love um, aminos are amazing to put in everything. Any kind of aminos. Instead of soy, go get you some flavored aminos. They're so good. They taste just like soy sauce, but they're so much better for you. Um, and that's pretty much it. Does anybody else want to share anything? Everybody's so quiet. Wow, all right. Um, all right, so I, I noticed that if everybody's getting their little packages in the mail, if you didn't get a package in the mail, it's because you didn't put your address in that worksheet that I sent out originally. The second round is coming out this week. Um, so if you got it, I'm so glad you got it and I hope you liked what you got. And then if you did it after, I, after Wednesday's meeting when I said, why is nobody looking in the meetings? Then they, those are going out tomorrow. So you'll get them this coming week. So if you are over the 40 person number, yours are going up this coming week. So um, everybody should have it eventually if you go in the spreadsheet. If you don't go in the spreadsheet, you're not gonna get it. Um, unless you go to Orange Theory. Cause if you're to Orange Theory, I just brought them there and started handing them out. Like I was Oprah and you get one and you get one and you get one. <laughs> all right, I am gonna let you guys all go. I am actually gonna go eat my dinner. I hope you guys all have an amazing Wednesday. I know Lauren mentioned it was her anniversary today with me. Happy anniversary. It should be a lot of people's anniversaries with me, actually, because um, for one thing, I've been doing this for years, but during quarantine, a lot of people came on and you guys are all still on. So if you came on during quarantine and you're still on, then it, we all have our anniversary. So happy anniversary to everybody. Um, and I decided I'm gonna be posting only one picture of a transformation every day. So if one person gets the spotlight of, for that day. 
So um, tomorrow's Lauren's day. Today was tomorrow. Today was tomorrow's day. Yesterday was Nassim's day, and the day before that was Lisa's day. Um, and as I get them, I'll ask you your permission. If you tell me no, it doesn't get posted. Um, and if you say yes and you want your face covered, I'll cover your face and we go from there. But every day will be different. Not every day, but when I post them, it'll be one person for the day so that they get accolades for doing what they're doing because you guys all deserve it. All right. Everybody have an amazing Wednesday. Always be badass. And I look forward to seeing you guys all next week. Don't forget, post those recipes. Emmy really wants them. Bye, guys.